This wood button project required a new set of supporting jigs and faceplates. I'll explain these in more detail in this video. Essentially, these are a drill press jig, a matching set of faceplates, a jam chuck, and a reconfigured faceplate. First off is the drill press jig. This jig is very simple in concept. Each button requires four holes perfectly positioned in a square in the middle of the button, one quarter inch on each side. I did not relish the thought of marking out all those small dimensions and accurately drilling the holes. I considered using stops on a drill press fence, which may have worked. However, I find that my measurements are more accurate if they index from points on the workpiece itself. This overcomes any error from even slight dimensional changes and bad angles. A fringe benefit of this jig is that it easily positioned the plank for a center hole. I'll explain this more later. Two short fences at right angles to each other will position the blank. Since another line of holes has to be drilled, small wood spacer strips provide an offset. Even better, when thinking about how to get a center hole perfectly positioned, the only change was to make the strips half as wide and then use two on each side for regular holes, but only one spacer strip on each side for the center hole. Making the jig is not difficult. One complication was a replaceable waste panel to drill into. Otherwise, after some use, the favorite button placement would be all chewed up and not give a solid backing for the drill bit. With these buttons, there was still a lot of tear out. It would have been worse without a solid backing. The complication for the waste panels is that it is diagonal to the wood. However, the fix is simple. I used hot melt glue to fasten the jig base to a couple of pieces of scrap plywood. One piece would ride the fence on my router, the other would hold the base level while routing. After routing, simply pop off the beads of hot melt glue. Then make the panel to fit into the recess. If you happen to go a tad too deep, like I did, then simply build up the critical spot with some masking tape. Then glue on the fences at a right angle to each other and let dry. I didn't use any screws or nails because next I would be routing a slot in each fence. These slots use stops on my router fence to control the length of the groove. After this slot, then route a one half inch slot on the bottom, deep enough for the bolt heads and washers that will hold down the workpiece. More on those in a moment. My slot is only wide enough for the bolt head, but the washer is wider. My solution, just hold the washer in the vice grips and grind two opposite sides to fit the groove. Then, epoxy the bolt and washer together. Between the bolt and the washer, they should not spin. To hold the button blanks, I sawed a wide slot or rabbit on a two inch wide piece of wood. This slot bridges the fence over the spacers and applies pressure on the button blank. I made a pair of wood knobs to capture a hex nut. I prefer the knob to a wing nut. There's more to grab onto. A little epoxy keeps the nut in place. Just to make sure no epoxy gets on the threads, I used little sticky dots for thread protection. Finally, since my drill press table is round, I lopped off the corners to make it easier to clamp to the table. When drilling the button blanks, I included two more waste blanks. The difference for these is the center hole using only one spacer strip on each side. I made two face plates, one threaded to fit the spindle, the other threaded to fit the live center. If you don't have taps to make threads, you could fit these to a chuck and figure out something else for your tailstock but I recommend getting the taps to make your own wood threads. Once you have them, you'll be amazed how often you'll use them. These wood blanks were glued to the faceplates using the center hole to center them exactly. Then simply stack all the buttons on two brass rods in diagonally opposite holes. Then insert this stack into the corresponding holes in the waste blocks already centered on the faceplates. Then turn the stack uniformly round all at once. The next chuck is a fairly standard jam chuck. Nothing unique here. Finally, I reused the earlier faceplate with the button holes, this time with short brass rods and two opposing holes. The rods were just long enough to hold one button while the button's rim profile is turned. For those who would like a no charge SketchUp model and drawings of the drilling jig, please come to my website aswoodsturns.com forward slash button jig. These buttons took more prep time than your typical turning. However, most of the preparations can be reused on this or other projects. 
Also, I hope you get a vision of how easy it can be to create your own jigs and fixtures and how easy a project can be with the appropriate supporting jigs, fixtures, and tools. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel so we can notify you of future videos. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns. Mm -hmm.